Now, so listen, when I, I first got into real estate in 2012, the very first thing I was told when I got into real estate is, go listen to podcasts, go download YouTube videos, see what other people are doing, and I definitely recommend that to you guys as well. One of the very first people I ever discovered was Claude Diamond. And how could you not? The name is just, it just attracts you to it, you know? That's, man, that's something I gotta watch. The videos he has out on YouTube, if you haven't seen his videos, he, he, sitting there with a seller, talking to sellers live on the phone, right, right there, really teaches you, it teaches you how to be bold, which is what we're gonna be talking about tonight, teaches you what to say, how to say it, and so that, that really helped me get the confidence. Anybody scared to talk to a seller? Maybe some new people in here? Maybe a little bit scared to talk to someone? Don't know what to say, maybe? Claude was the first person I ever found who actually solved that, wanted to solve that problem. Okay, here is how you talk to a seller. And I don't want to steal any of this thunder. But um, please do me a favor and get up on your feet. And welcome to Birmingham, Alabama, Mr. Claude Diamond. Thank you. I have to remember it. Um, 
I've been in this business uh, for about 32 years. You can't tell cheap hair dye. Um, but I love it. I work for my home offices. I live about uh, half a year in Winter Park, Colorado. I live the other half in San Diego, California. And I live another half in Hawaii. Three halves. And uh, what I love about this business is that I can work from home. Uh, it has given my family just a, a wonderful lifestyle. Um, I, um, we are debt free. It's going to sound like bragging, but we work very hard. I work with my lovely wife, Claudia. Is that a nice thing? <laughs> she won't change it either. It's amazing. We just celebrated our 31st wedding anniversary. You can applaud. <laughs> you know how you make a marriage last 31 years? Make a shitload of money. <laughs> it really helps. <laughs> and uh, we both work from home and um, debt free, and we have great medical and retirement, and kids' colleges paid for, mortgage free, debt free. And it's all from this great real estate business. And uh, so I love talking about it. I like talking about the mistakes I've made. I've made some, uh, quite a few mistakes in the initial part of my business. Uh, when I first got started, uh, who remembers when they got real estate fever? You know, you know when you, you just, everything is about real estate. You want to read and absorb it. Everything, your friends will walk away from you when they see you come in the room and you talk about real estate. And um, I'm originally from New York City. Does it still come out, that New York accent? Yeah. Any of you all can see it, you know what I'm saying? How you doing over there? Hey. Oh, look who's here, stand up. We got a guest star here, all the way from Michael, the legend Buckholz. Michael is one of my students from, what, how many years ago? This young man is fantastic. He goes, he knocks on doors, he gives good fun, he hustles. He has really built a career for himself. I am so proud of you and thank you for coming my book. Talk to this guy. I'm big on mentoring, by the way. One of the reasons I'm here is because Brian is a mentor. I like people who give back, not just sell programs all the time, but give back and mentor and teach. Talk, make sure you talk to Michael back there. Any of my other students here that I missed? Okay. Um, so I got into real estate uh, when I was in, born and raised in New York City, and then my parents wanted to improve my elocution, so we moved to New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, I started, I worked for a company called Swift Premium. It was the 70s. I wanted to make a difference in the world. I'm Woodstock generation, okay? So I sold hot dogs in the South Bronx in New York. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I read books, a lot of books about real estate. You uh, ever read uh, Robert Allen's Nothing Down? Okay, that was a great book. Uh, Robert Allen basically said that we should um, that we should uh, get, get properties that for little or nothing down. What he didn't tell you is nobody else wanted those properties. Okay, he now he wrote a new book called Nothing Left. <laughs> <laughs> I then read another book um, by um, oh gosh, uh, Mark Harrison, uh, Financial Genius. <laughs> and uh, I can crack up the uh, and the financial genius told me, and he used to do the financial freedom report, and he said, take all your credit cards and take those cash advances to, to buy those nothing down properties from Robert Allen. Now there's a, there's a concept in financial improvements and management, right? Okay, and then another book I read that was really impressive on me was um, William Nickerson, How I Turned 5000 into $5 Million. And Mr. Nickerson used the word called sweat equity, where you take properties and you improve them. Okay, and so I had all these bad properties, bad neighborhoods, credit card debt, and I, I'm, I'm challenged maintenance-wise. I can't do any of that stuff. So I had a lot of bad properties and uh, it was really not a lot of fun in the beginning. And I was very fortunate, I met a, my mentor named Max. And I've written some books about him. Uh, so I'm really big on the mentoring uh, concept. I'll give this away to somebody in a little while. Um, I, have no, I have no maintenance skills, okay? Uh, when I go to change a roll of toilet paper, I kept breaking the holders. My wife Claudia says to me, why do you keep breaking them? I said, they won't come on, honey. She said, you know there's a little spring you're supposed to push them in, right? You know, that's a bad joke. <laughs> it's true though. I was at this hotel, I'm staying in this hotel tonight, this beautiful embassy suite. I check into my room, I go to the bathroom, long flight. Uh, and it's the weirdest toilet I've ever seen in my life. I, I got the house cleaning lady to come inside. I said, ma'am, what is this? She said, Mr. Diamond, that's a bidet. 
<laughs> I said, Mom, I sh I've never seen one of those before. Why would you want to sit on a toilet and brush your teeth? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't, so I'm mechanically challenged. I don't like that fixer upper stuff. But uh, I met my mentor, Max, and he taught me a lot about um, lease purchasing and sales. The man impressed me. It was really, uh, I saw him do something that I didn't see at any seminar or anything else. He actually closed somebody in one phone call. I've never seen anyone ever do that before. And that really, sh I didn't know you could do it because um, I, I didn't like it. How many people here, it's honest now, you're on sodium pentothal and two martinis. Like I um, and how many people really, you'd rather do anything than pick up that phone and call a stranger? Come on, you know you're out there. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh, and he had that magic. You know, I would rather do anything rather than call and talk to strangers. My mom said, this. what does everybody's mom say? When we're, go play in the traffic. No, don't talk to strangers. Very good. Don't talk to strangers. And here we are, we're all growing up. We want to make a lot of money in this wonderful business. We have to talk to strangers. And Nobody in this business, we talk about, most people talk about three, uh, three things that I think are important in this business. Most gurus talk about the strategies. Not a strategy. Slide here somewhere. Yes, most people talk about the strategies. I like lease purchasing. I've written several books about lease purchasing, lease options. Uh, I learned that from my mentor, Max. And so we spend probably 75% of our time learning the different ways to do real estate subject to wholesale real estate, uh, uh, owner finance, owner carry, uh, cash offers, fixer uppers. We learn all the strategies. And then the next part that they talk about is the marketing, marketing for leads. That's something I want to touch. So I want to touch on all three of these. And most marketing, I think today, is still in the stone age in terms of creative real estate. We're still talking a lot about mailers and signs and things like that, but there's nothing wrong with that. The only trouble is it's a low ROI for all the time and investment we put in. I do all my marketing, 100% of my marketing through social media. You know this little, little device here? How many people have one of these? All right. How many times a day do you think we use this thing? How many times? Who's the youngest? Who's the young people in the audience? Who's in, who's in their 20s here? Okay, how many times are you guys in your 20s? How many times a day? 60, 70, 80 times a day? Uh, sometimes, some uh, Wall Street Journal said up to six, seven hours a day and more on this device per day. How many times, sir? Your name? Kevin. Kevin. How many times did you go to the post office this week? Okay. So why are we doing mailers and things like that? That costs 50 cents to a dollar and can do all the market. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Um, and then I love, I'm going to talk about sales also. So I want to kind of hit on all three so you get a lot of value out of tonight. And if you want to ask me questions or do so, do you guys like role plays? I love doing role plays. I love doing role plays. Who's got a water bottle here? One of those real fancy water bottles. Does anyone have one? I'll hold it up. No? I'll give you one. <laughs> Who's it? There we go, my new friend. Sell me, sell me this water bottle. Stand up. Put your name again. Yeah. Everybody say hi, Kevin. Hi. Put them on the hot spot. <laughs> Kevin, sell me that water bottle. Are you thirsty? Oh, shit. <laughs> Look at the pretty green top. Look at the label. You can carry it everywhere. He said something interesting. What did he say? Thirsty. Am I thirsty? He went right to it. How come when we, in real estate, do we ever ask people if they're thirsty or why are they selling their home? What do we do in most cases? We go into a presentation, don't we? We tell them about the history of dirt. And we go into it. And we go right into it. So we got to learn to sell differently. Out of those three, what do you think the one is going to make you the most money? You could spend all the time learning strategies. You could have the best leads in the world. You could be the smartest person in the room and know all the different strategies. You could 
have the best leads in the world, but if you cannot convert those leads, you're doomed to fail. I'm like the demotivational Anthony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, and this is the best, one of the best takeaways I'm gonna give you tonight. You've gotta focus, you've gotta be superb in the art and science of persuasion. Isn't that right, Michael? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really all about that because getting people to like you, to trust you, to say yes, and I don't even go to a property unless I'm gonna pick up a check or a contract. I'm on the phone all day. We have a, we have a big problem in creative real estate. Um, let's look at a typical real estate uh, presentation. <laughs> No, we're the 31st person, right? And what do we always do? We, we give a presentation. So I'm gonna, here's some takeaways for tonight. No more presentations. Stop giving presentations until you know what they need. You're gonna have to learn to ask questions first. No more, who uses scripts here? Come on, you're on, so, you're on the sodium pentothal and two more teeth. How many of you are using scripts on the phone? I know you're out there. They're caca. Put them in the shredder. Scripts don't work in my world. Talking to people, adult to adult. I'm a big fan of transactional analysis. Dr. Eric Byrne, Dr. Harris, I'm okay, you're okay, games people play. About learning to get people to listen, to respect you, okay? We've gotta stop giving presentations. How many people, yeah, sir, uh, Doug, when you go to your doctor, doctor, yes, doctor, what does your doctor say when you walk into the examination room? Hi, Doug. We're having a special on back surgery. Have you seen our coupon? Price goes up on Friday. What does your doctor say, Doug? <laughs> Doug, what's bothering you, right? Where does it hurt, baby? Right? And do you mind him asking those intrusive questions while you put on that gown with the exposed, you know? You, know? you don't mind that, right? Because that's your doctor. When you go to your lawyer, God, for, I'm a recovering attorney. Any attorneys in the room? Okay, I'm the only, I'm, I'm in the 10-step program. <laughs> and so we've got to, think, our professionals who we go to don't go into a presentation, do they? They ask questions. You came in there for a problem. When we approach people in real estate, we need to start asking questions. We have to, we do too much show and tell. We do too much free consulting. Um, on the phone. How many people here have got somebody on the phone, they're friendly, they're lonely, we talk to them for 40 minutes, they answer all their questions, right? And then what do they say? I'll think about it. Who wants to do an I'll think about it role play here? I got a good game over here. I'll give you the least purchase product. You can take home a Bible from this seminar today. Who's, who's, who wants the least purchase? Stand up, sir. Thank you. Brave man. What's your name? Lawrence. Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. Lawrence, tell me to stay, stay up there. <laughs> Read your Bible, by the way. That's a good book. You'll enjoy that. It's all the different ways to do lease purchasing. Um, go ahead, Lawrence. Tell me, you, Lawrence, uh, we can, uh, do you want to do this deal that we talked about for the last 40 minutes? Ah, oh, think about it. Lawrence, you're not allowed to think about it. Everyone, ooh, give me an ooh. ooh. Okay. You're not allowed to think about it. I don't know. I, I got to talk to my wife. No, that's a good one. That's another one. We'll do that one too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, Lawrence, I don't want you. I think you're more worried about my feelings than your own. When people usually tell me they, I'll, I'll think about it, what they really mean is no. no. So why don't we do that? I'm here to help you move in a house, sell a house, invest in a house. If you're not comfortable with what we talked about, why don't we just say it's over? We're done. It's, you can fire me. Is that okay? So what? Sounds good. Okay. Now that it's over, you shared a lot of information. You've been renting your mother-in-law's attic for the last 15 years with the wife, five kids, and the 10 gerbils. Aren't you sick of that? Don't you want to move out? What do you need from me in order for us to move forward and get past the I'll think about it? Uh, check. Check? How much? 75000 
And if I could give you seventy-five thousand right now, absolutely. I'm sorry, I got a Walmart here again. Absolutely. Oh, very good. Round of applause for him. When they say I'll think about it, you shock them. They get mad when you say you're not allowed to think about it. We tell them that up front, and I'm going to get into some of my uh, mind maps a little later on the gut sales system. We have three sections: agenda, qualification, close. I'm basically doing 180 slides in 45 minutes tonight, so you, I'm going to talk as fast as I can, give you as much information, but you will get this if you send me that text. Uh, I will send you all this stuff tonight. What was the other objection you said there? That was talk to the wife. About. Oh, somebody give me an I'll talk to. Who wants to give me an I'll talk to my wife? Oh. Come on, I'll do it. There we go, great man. There you go. Are you two a, a couple or something? You're dating. Here, I'll give this to you. You can turn, you can turn it over too. Uh, you want to talk to your, he's talking about wives now too. <laughs> he's talking to a guy whose name is Diamond. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, tell me what, um, I, I gotta talk to the wife. You know, I ain't happy, ain't nobody. No, I, I, I understand that, you know, and uh, I like it a man who respects his wife enough to take her into consideration on a major financial decision. That off the road, that's called a Stoking works if it's sincere. You've got to be a very good actor to be a very good gut salesperson. Stroking, nurturing, and empathy. Three words you want to take away tonight. Stroking, nurturing, and empathy. Back to the role play. You know what, Mike? That's it. Let me. You know what? Let me check. Let me check with my wife. Hi, honey. Claudia. <laughs> I'm talking to Mike here. Yeah, yeah. He's been living in the back of uh, Leslie's pickup truck for like six months. Now. <laughs> yeah, and, he, and he's talking to me about the house and everything. She says it's okay to buy. I really do this shit. <laughs> I really do. If I'm not having fun, you cannot make these cold calls. And talks. Thank you very much. Round for Mike. <laughs> you cannot do this business every day if you have a phone and not a phone. We have to make it fun. We get, I'm the only word person who uses that three-letter word in sales. It's got to be fun. Because if, we, if we're hesitant, if we'd rather clean the toilet, well, I don't want to make those cold calls. I'll go, um, I'll go clean the bathroom again or something or wash the car. Because we don't want to make those cold calls because sometimes they're embarrassing, they're humiliating. We feel like our pants dropped around our ankles in the shopping mall in front of Santa Claus at Christmas time. It's horrible. So we've got to get past that and turn it into fun. So I say crazy things like, you're not allowed to think about it, or when you talk to my wife, not everybody likes it, but if you make people laugh, is that a part of persuasion, making people laugh? Does that go towards likability? How do you learn all this stuff? It took me a long time. It takes practice. I, my mentor, Max, would, he, he, would, he would make these magic moments on the phone where he didn't close everybody, but he closed a lot more people than I ever did. And he was having fun while he was doing it on the phone. He knew how to ask questions. He knew how to get the information that he needed from people. Um, you can't treat the phone like a cactus. We can't afford to waste prospects. We spend too much money on low quality leads. I'll get that. In a, I'll get to that in a while. Sales can be embarrassing, humiliating, and frustrating sometimes. And that's the key to this business: is can you speak to enough people on a consistent basis, have good phone calls, and set up a follow-up system? Somebody remind me later tonight when we do Q and A. Write down your questions, by the way, and um, I'll tell you about my follow-up system, too, if we have time. Um, so my, it, you, you, the prospect manipulates us, obfuscates us, and this is going to shock you. I'm sorry, ladies. They lie to us. Okay? Why do they do all this? Because they perceive us as someone who's trying to do that to them. So they already know the answers because they've spoken to so many other salespeople calling them up, right? You guys have called on Craigslist ads, Zillow ads, and things like that. You have the mailers, the yellow letters, and things like that. Do you think you're the first person to send it to them? No. So they already know what you're going to do and say, so you better have another system to offset it and stay in control. Who should be in control? I've got, one of my favorite sayings is the salesperson always comes first. 
It's a little controversial. I believe that people who work hard, give good value, do business honestly, want to solve problems, are entitled to be compensated. Can I have an amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, the 11th commandment. Oh, I love this one. It's uh, the 11th commandment. Moses dropped one on the way down the mountain. You didn't know this? Okay. It's in your least purchased Bible. He dropped, the 11th commandment says that it's, you can still get into heaven by treating a salesperson like shit. <laughs> right? How do we treat strangers, strangers who call us at dinner time? Those, those, you getting the robot calls in Birmingham yet? Have they reached here yet? Are they obnoxious? Oh, right? What do we do to strangers who call us? I'm nasty. I am. I do. Take me off your list. Leave me alone. I say other ugly things. I hang up. My New York comes out. So we have to we have to change that, the way they perceive us. They wouldn't do it to their doctor or their lawyer anymore, their, or their accountant or somebody else. We have to change the whole paradigm. We have no control of the process, and we have no understanding of the human behavior. So we have to change a lot of that. We've got to have basically fun in the in when we're doing sales. Um, here's a video. I don't know if Brian might have showed it a lot. I'll do it. Did you see this one video already? Um, this is the one I did with one of my students. Uh, it's on YouTube. I have uh, over 600 videos on YouTube. Oh, okay. Is it in California? Yeah. I might see if I look up a window or a phone. Yeah, hi, this is Quad. Uh, Christina just gave me your number. The house isn't available, so is it? This is Quad. I'm in San Diego. <laughs> Um, I, I live in Colorado also, and my friend Christina just gave me your phone number. Uh, uh, no, Christina Manos. Okay. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, actually, I'm, where is this now? I'm sorry, she didn't give me much information. Tomoko is lovely. Is it near the venues? Yeah, I think that's about five miles away. Okay, is it available now or, or occupied? Or? Yeah, not for a couple of months. Oh, when, when would it be available? Probably April. April? Oh, yeah, April. Perfect. Oh my gosh, you're trying to sell it now. Okay. Well, are you an investor or are you buying it for yourself or what? I can be whatever you want, sir. What do you mean, what do you mean? I mean, actually. Are you buying it or are you selling it? Well, you know, I, I have a place over in Manchester Santa Fe, but I'm thinking of. Uh, actually, is, is it an investor? That's a good point. Is it an investor type? Would I be in that? Would I be in it, interested in it if I was an investment property? No. Why is that? You know what? Right now, I'm going to take her out of the market. I've got some money that's coming out. You're changing a diaper at the same time. I can hear it. Right, that's right. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, what's the purpose of the sale right now? I was going to sell it for free money. Oh, just for the, okay. It's, yeah. it's not free and clear or anything like that, right? It's free and clear. If I, uh, what, kind, what are you asking for before I go? $138,000. If I gave you $138,000, would you be willing to hold the mortgage for uh, 36 to uh, 60 months? Yeah, possibly. If you don't have to call back, I'm really busy right now. I can't, so I'm going to be catching a plane this afternoon. I'm very interested. I'd love to make it up. Call me in an hour. Do you have an email or something? I can send you an offer and write, I can write something up and send you an offer. So. <laughs> Well, so am I, but I want to buy your house. Give me an email address, I'll send you an offer today. I'll change the diaper. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hung up. <laughs> hey, this is, this, oh, is, like this is real. This is real. But these are the phone calls we get sometimes, right? Did I give him a presentation of the history of lease purchasing and real estate and everything? I kept asking questions, even though with the baby screaming and everything. Did you hear the one magic he said? What was the best part of that whole thing? What did the man say? He said yes. Yeah. He said yes, but what was, there was one financial thing he said. Free and clear. Those are three of the most beautiful words in the English language. Free and clear, because when a property is free and clear, I'll give someone full price if I can get the terms. Two words to take away with today, price and terms. 
If we can get the price, we can do a cash deal. If we can't get the price, then we need the term. I'll give someone full price if they give me terms. Principal only payments for 60 months. I love that. I don't need a bank, do I? That's called control, that's called leverage. Real estate is about leverage. And that goes to the tactics, the strategies that we were talking about. The salesman always comes first. Don't use scripts. Don't ask for the order. Do you ever get someone who keeps asking and asking for the order? They still teach this, by the way. Anybody ever go to some sales trainings and ask for the order five times or more? I personally find it annoying. How about you guys? I'll buy it when I'm ready to buy it. Don't shove it down my throat. Don't try to bully or intimidate me. Make the prospect want to buy it. No presentations until you have enough information to tie in their needs, their greed, their money, their problems, their issues, and then you tie it into your presentation. We, we, we do, we all, how many people here, do you suffer from the agony of premature presentations? Okay, because I did. I would go right away and give a presentation. Guess what happens to people who hear presentations they don't want to hear? They crash, they go out, they tune out. Instead, ask them questions and get them involved. And then work hard, be smart, be creative, and have courage, and have fun in sales. Let's, um, let's, um, let's talk about, I want to talk a little bit about lease purchasing, just a few slides. It's my favorite. I wrote several books on lease purchase, the 21st century, lease purchase Bible. I love lease purchasing because when I had all those bad properties in bad neighborhoods before I met Max, I needed a different way to control real estate, and Max taught me about lease optioning. Did anybody here, have you had any speakers talk about this? It's a really, it's a great little strategy um, on it. It's, it's my favorite strategy. It's basically a lease. Everybody here knows how to rent. It allows you possession and crawl. Who has, who has greater rights, the owner or the tenant here in Alabama? <laughs> the tenant, right? And an option is basically a contractual right. It says you have the choice whether to buy the property with the pre-negotiated price and terms. And it gives you the right to purchase it. It gives you so many other rights. Max used to say to me, you know, I had all these bad properties, bad neighborhoods, and the credit card debt and everything, and I had tenants from anybody here, me, Martin, and Morticia St. Nasty, also known as the tenants from hell. Okay, and we, do we all have war stories about tenants who moved in and they're lovely? And then the next month, the check's a couple days late, and a month after that, they push it out another week or two, then the check bounces, then you have to go to Mr. Scheist, uh, Mr. Attorney, uh, to get them to kick them out, right? And uh, it's one of the reasons I went to law school. I, mean, I figured it'd be cheaper than paying all the attorneys for all the evictions I was doing all the time. <laughs> okay? So lease purchasing allowed me to control other people's properties by renting. Max said that the tenants were smarter than me. And I said, what do you mean? I've gone to all the seminars. Like, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the big shot investor. He said, no, the tenants, you get, you got to buy the property. you got to get the loan. you got to put 10, 20, 30% down. you got to pay taxes, insurance, principal, interest, homeowner fees, and everything else that we think of. What does the tenant pay to move in and have possession and legal control? First and last, right? He said, the tenants are much smarter than you, Claude. And he said, why don't we become smart investor tenants or smart tenants and learn how to control real estate this way? Let me show, um, here is um, uh, my home in Colorado, okay? And there's my, uh, this, is, this is the deal we did in Colorado 21 years ago. That's my pet moose. I live in Winter Park, Colorado, by the way. That's right, I flew in today. Uh, it's only a two and a half hour flight. I was amazed how fast I got here. And you are a good salesman. And um, I'm at 10,000 feet. <laughs> and what am I here? A little above sea level below, or something like that? 350. I feel 21, you know what I mean? I'm feeling good <laughs> at altitude. And this property we got, my wife and I, we were living in San Diego. We didn't know if we wanted to live in a place that gets 350 to 400 inches of snow a year. They call it never summer. We have basically winter and less winter. <laughs> it, was, it was something like this morning when I left, at 4.30 this morning to go to Denver Airport. It was 43, 44 degrees. It gets cold in the morning, it warms up. So I got, we got this house and we said, we don't know if we want to live here or not. So why don't we, we'll, we'll rent the house. And so we negotiated a price for $370,000 uh, $370, on a two year lease with options to see if we liked it, if it was well built, if we liked the neighbors and everything else. 
We put 5,000 down, 2,500 a month. The owner came back to us a few months later and he said he needed money for a spec home he was building. And he dropped the price, $70,000 to 300,000. Do you think I excel do you think I accelerated the option and bought it? Do you think to save 70? You better believe I did. We put in upgrades to it. We did it today, 21 years later, this property is free and clear and worth over two point to actually closer to three million dollars right now because Aspen Corp just came in and bought the ski area down the road from us for one and a half billion of the big dollars. One property can set you up for life, even if it's your own home, starting out with this. So I love telling that story. And um, it's just what you can do with a lease option. You can, you can do so many different things. Um, you can rent it, you can, you can sublet it, you can lease a sandwich lease it, you can assign it, you can wholesale it, or you can move it into yourself. This was my first lease purchase in Stanhope, New Jersey. Um, I got it, I, I wrote an article about it once, it was called The Tenant That Wouldn't Go Away. I had a lease purchase tenant for 14 years. He, he helped me pay off the mortgage on this property. It was what, do you think I like that tenant? Yeah. Guess what he did at the 14th year? You'll never yeah. guess. Yeah. He moved out and went and he moved to the property downstairs. <laughs> do you think I minded? Who got the appreciation? Who got the tax benefits? I got everything. And the property, we refinanced it two times. We took the money out and bought other properties that we lease purchased. And we originally sold this one property, just a little one and a half bedroom condo in a nice part of northwestern New Jersey, an hour outside of New York City, for $180,000. That's what you can do when you own properties and you lease purchase them. You can make money up front, money every month, money at the end. I just wanted to share uh, just a little bit about this. I believe in good homes in good neighborhoods. I told you I'm mechanically challenged. These are some of the properties we've done in California, um, which is obnoxiously priced up. California is, guys, right now is just, it's, it's exploding. It's, it's becoming unaffordable because the inventory is so low. Supply and demand, basic supply and demand. What's going on in Birmingham? Same thing, low supply, prices are starting to go up. Yeah, it's kind of fun, right? It's not 2008 anymore, is it? Absolutely. So. Um, just some of the advantages of lease purchasing. <coughs> Tenants are smarter than investors, so become a tenant. Control without, uh, without ownership. Minimal cash outlay. Profits up front, monthly, in the end. My daughter's first three words were positive cash flow. You <laughs> <laughs> can teach a kid something worse, right? How many people here work from their home office? I love, work, I love working from my home. Yeah, you got kids? You ever get on the phone and you, your kids are crawling all over you and everything? My kids are growing up. I miss that so much now. And, and everything. I remember once I was doing a deal on the phone when you know, we were this close to consummating the deal and um, uh, really close. And then all of a sudden I hear a yell down from the hall. It's my little guy, David. And, and, and he's yelling out, somebody please help me wipe my butt. <laughs> <laughs> this shit happens, right? You got kids, right? So I go to the guy on the phone. We're this close to doing the deal. We have a lot of money. He says, I said, I got to go for a minute. He said, Claude, don't leave. I want to finish this deal. Why are you leaving? What's so damn important? I said, sometimes you just get a little behind in your work. <laughs> I say it's a double entendre. <laughs> I say that. Let's talk about marketing. I'm sorry. I appreciate you folks who worked all day long and you came here. Thank you so much. Uh, let's talk about my rule, a little bit about marketing before we go more into sales. Um, the rule of five is one of the most important things I teach to my students that I mentor. Um, if you want to make, you've got to speak to five new prospects every day. You've got to set up a marketing plan. You've got to speak to people. That would be 25 to 35 people a week. If you can do that, statistically, the algorithms, the forces of the universe are in your favor right now. Why do casinos in Vegas make money? Because mathematically, people are going to go and leave money and it's in, the, it's in the house's favor. We've got to put real estate in our favor. We've got to speak to five new people a day and you've got to set up a market. Do you teach a marketing plan? so that they can get enough people in, real important. You've got to leave guts voicemails all day. How many people, how many times when we call people up on properties, we get voicemail? How many? 
50, 60, 75 percent, right? What does an average voicemail sound like? Somebody tell me what a voicemail sounds like. This is good. Call me back. Yeah. And what happens, Doug? They don't call back. They don't call back. <laughs> Doug is right. Talk to Doug. Okay. They don't call back. So what? Yes. Doug, help me out. I'll give you a book here. Oh, this one's a good book. Okay. Give me a beat. Doug's not in, but leave a message. Doug's not here right now. Leave a message. that good. That very well. But this is going to be a guts message. Give me a beat. Hey, Doug, Claude Diamond here. I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you. I need to speak with you about that important real estate legal issue. Can you call me at 619-421-4121 before 3.30 tomorrow? It's real important we speak. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye. Doug's going to go. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you know this guy, Claude? He's a legal real estate. What's it? What's Doug going to do? Hopefully. Oh, Why? Oh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the thing that's going to go on? Not up here, but down here. Here, here that he doesn't know what's going on. How about curiosity? Ooh. Curiosity, is that a biggie? Leave guts voicemail messages, because if they call you back, you win. You can always fix it later. What do you mean there's an issue with this? Oh, I'm sorry, so I make so many phone calls there. You don't have a house for sale, do you? <laughs> What's the definition of marketing? One word answer. Leads. One word. Reaction. We're trying to get a reaction. If we can get them to call us back. How wonderful is it when people call us? Don't we love those calls? Warm calls, right? We have three kinds of calls. Cold calls, nobody likes those, but we're going to fix that tonight, right? Say yes. 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 We're going to do warm calls. We love the warm calls, right? Because they're interested or we think so. Okay, and then we have follow-up calls. We've got to set up a follow-up system also. We've got to... We've got to make offers every day. I don't care what kind of offers. Send them a letter of intent. Have you teach them about letters of intent yet? Short contracts, one page, real simple. Text them, email them. Make offers all the time when you talk to people. Just like that video I did before, I need them an offer, first phone call. Maybe we can do a deal. You never know what they're going to say. Make offers every day, even if it's for another meeting, another appointment, a follow-up phone call. Make <coughs> offers all the time. Um, I use a system called Evernote. Uh, I, I use the also another system called the Composition Book, Walmart, yes. 99 cents. <laughs> Anybody here? There's so many different ways to yeah, follow up systems. There's Podio, there's, what do you guys use? Salesforce, Podio, all of these. I use a notebook, I scribble notes down because I just like to do that. And then what I do is I take a picture in Evernote. Anybody here using Evernote besides me? I love Evernote. It's a great system, it's free. You can upgrade to the pro model for 60 bucks. You take pictures of your notes, you upgrade it. Here's where it gets really good. Then, so say you speak to somebody, there's nothing there, right? But maybe you want to follow up in 15 days, two months, three months, and everyone can set a tickler to remind you. Then you look at your picture of your notes, and you go, hi, hi, Doug, how's Betty Lou? How's your dog Spot? And, and, and you have all your notes. Does that get you towards familiarity? Why people do business with people they know. Remember the 11th commandment? Okay, you can still get to heaven by treating a salesperson not very nicely. If the more we know, the more we can speak to people, the more we save our notes in Evernote. And the beautiful thing is it synchronizes with all your devices, your iPhones and everything else. So it's good stuff. Um, let's talk about, I'm a big fan, we were talking, uh, Brian and I were talking about Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, earlier today. I'm a big, big fan of social media marketing. How many people go on Facebook here? Tell me the truth. Okay, a lot. I'm impressed. Okay, any Snapchatters in the audience? Very good. Very good. Where do you think people, when someone's moving from Florida to Birmingham, what are they going to do? Go to the post office, buy a newspaper, <coughs> they're going to go on this little device here. I do all my marketing, 100% of my marketing, at zero cost. Once in a while I do some Facebook ads for 30, 40 bucks. I do all my marketing on social media because that's where people are going now. Especially people, especially the millennials, 
and, and they're going there and, they look, and they're looking for information. Someone who was moving here to Birmingham to buy a home, what are they gonna Google? What are they gonna put in there? What's the best schools? Who has the biking path? Do they have uh, Indian restaurants here in Birmingham? Okay, Chinese food, whatever. They wanna find information. They wanna look at pictures, Instagram, Pinterest. I love, uh, I, don't, I know this is hard to see, and uh, for those of you who send me the text, um, this is this definitely, um, this mind map is in there. I love mind maps. There's six C's to social media. I do YouTube, okay? I have a face made for radio, so I do videos every week. I love videos because I, I try to make them, if you like to do videos, do videos. Make them fun. Make them talk about your mistakes. Talk about your successes. Talk about things you learned. Talk about tonight. What happened? People are content driven. They love this stuff. And guess what happens if you're in the real estate business and you talk about real estate in different neighborhoods or financing and things like that? You might get a phone call, you might get a text, you might get an email, you might get them going to your web page. This is important stuff. This is marketing today, 2017. I get all my leads, I get phone calls every day from my YouTube videos. And the beautiful thing is, I have another slide here, um, because I just want to show you this. Um, when I do a video, you guys are familiar with this, you upload a video, you can do it right in your computer here. If you have a Mac, they have something called Photo Booth. Every phone has a video camera in it. You make a little video, you upload it so easily. There's a little button on YouTube, and then here's where it gets good. You gotta use, first you put in a sexy title, Cold Calling and Reality Sales Training, okay? Then you put in your keywords in this. What, somebody's going to be searching for Birmingham, Birmingham Real Estate. Uh, what's the county here? Jefferson. 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 Jefferson, thank you. Jefferson County Real Estate. Rent to own in Jefferson. Uh, owner financing. You put in these keywords in there. You put a little description down here about what your video is about. Uh, and then you, collect, you just click on this little F here and it goes right into Facebook. You click on this little birdie here, it goes into Twitter and to Google+, Plus, and to Blogger, and to Reddit, and to Tumblr, and to Pinterest, and to uh, LinkedIn. One little video can send your, who you are as a person all over the world. By the way, who owns YouTube? A little company called G-O-O-G-L-E, right? You know how much it cost me to put in a video like this and send it all over the place? It's not, not a, nothing. This is the marketing you need to start doing. If you don't like to do videos, do a blog, but put content in your blog. Put in Facebook posts on a regular basis. I have thousands of people who follow me on Facebook. I get calls. I want my phone to ring. Guess what happens when we speak to five or more people a day? Even if all five people, there's nothing there. Maybe the next day there will be somebody there. We have to stop being a secret in real estate. We have to get out there. Let me go back to this other video, uh, this other slide here. Um, it's gotta be content driven. It's gotta relate to what people are searching for. It's gotta be creative, it's gotta be interesting. It can be photos, it can be text, it can be videos, it can be live streaming. Anybody here ever, I'm on uh, Periscope every Friday. Anybody here ever hear of Periscope? Facebook Live, Facebook Live spent a couple billion dollars so that you can watch live videos on this little device whenever, whenever it comes on. You all, that, this is the marketing we're seeing, live streaming and everything else there. We thought it was just for the kids, right? No, this is the whole world is watching this stuff. It's gotta be creative, it's gotta be consistent. You cannot do one video and say, okay, I'm done. You've gotta do it on a regular basis. You wanna build up a following of people. Who, want to, who watch you in real estate. It's got to be contemporary. Talk about the news. Talk about events. Talk about what's happening here in Birmingham, in Alabama. It's got to be combined. I want to join that party. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a happy hour. <laughs> um, it's got to be compelling, something that stimulates them. And here's a biggie. Do we like commercials anymore? No. We don't like commercials. What happens? What happened, what happened to, uh, what's it called, uh, Blockbuster Video? Okay, do we get in our car and drive there anymore? Do we watch regular TV anymore? Very little, right? We wanna go to Netflix. What's better than being in, in bed naked with an iPad on your chest and a bloody sandwich next to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad visual, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
this is the stuff you gotta do. This is the stuff you gotta do. Okay. Um, one more thing here. Here's a, look at the views on this. Here's one video. This, this is my page uh, on YouTube. I have over 54, I think it's 6,000 subscribers now. We get hundreds of thousands of views um, on this. There's one of my uh, buddies here who we hope to get here, Joe McCall. This one video, I've had over 100,000 people watch this video. It's a live sales call. Has anybody ever seen this one? It's my mom. It went viral for me, which was great. People watch this video and they call me up. I want to learn how to do sales. Can you help me with that? I want to learn real estate. I want to, you know, they call me up. When I speak to enough people, I go to the, I, I keep Mrs. Diamond very, very happy. <laughs> so this, watch this video with Joe though. It's a lot of fun. And so, I just I wanted to share with you so, um, a little bit about social media because I don't think any of the groups talk enough about this. And to me, we don't have to spend any money and we can generate really high quality leads. And the ROI is magnificent because when you're spending money on other marketing leads, it's not that they're bad, it's just they cost a heck of a lot of money, don't they? And this is all free. Who wants to talk about sales? Say yes. yes. Okay, let's talk about sales. This was in San Diego Bell Ballpark, and I thought it'd be inappropriate for a sales training conversation um, on it. Who, who remembers this sales guy? What was his name? Billy Mays. Wasn't he great? Didn't you like him? He had such credit, he sold so much stuff. Do you think we can tell the truth in sales and still make a living? Did you ever see this commercial? Might need to boost the body. tragedy story uh, for him and, and all the people he fleeced. How did he do that? How did other people give this man money? You know, they interviewed him. Uh, they interviewed all the people he gave money after he was arrested. He's in federal penitentiary now for 180 years. Um, they asked him, why did, why did you give this man money? You know what the answer was? You know what the answer was? Isn't that amazing? It just fascinates me about that guy. Um, who's my, who, but he's been replaced. Who's my new favorite salesperson? Who's the best salesperson in this country? <laughs> I never get political. We're not going political, don't worry. But how the hell did he do that? <laughs> it had to be more than just Twitter. Absolutely. But it's time for a role play. Who wants to really, how to sell with guts play? Who wants to do a role play? Oh, Lady over here. Have a seat. And your name? Olga. Olga. Thanks for doing this, Olga. Tell me, oh, no, keep, you got a word from Olga. Olga, um, Olga uh, I'm not sure. I don't know you that well. You seem like a nice young lady. Uh, do you have any references? References for what? 
references about the, so I, I don't really know who you are, I want to know more about you if you're successful. You tell me that you're a great real estate agent and you're going to help me sell the house and everything. But I, uh, I've been burned before. Do, do you, you want to sell your house? Yeah, do you have any references? Of course, I do. Okay. I have a really good friend who can help. Oh, your friend. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, you did it just the way most people will do it. They'll get defensive or they'll change the subject and pull out an obfuscation. I can't spell it, but I love that word. It's where they change, intentionally change the word. Now, you ask me for references. You get to beat me up. Okay? You know, thank you for asking, Mom. God, I wish more people would ask me for references. How many would you like? The Five, at least. Five? Are you sure? Could I get you six or seven references? Yes, if as, I, much, as many as possible. I love it because you know what? You don't know me that well, and I know if once you speak to my customers and they vouch for my veracity, I love words, uh, and they vouch for my veracity, you'll probably feel much better about doing business with me. If I give you those references tonight and you call them tomorrow, what happens at 2.30 if those people meet with your expectations? I will call you back. And? And I will thank you. Thank you. She should be up here. She's better than me. But the, here was the point. You threw me off. That was good. <laughs> the point was, can we use a stall and an objection for closing people? I said to Olga, if I give you those references and they meet with your expectation, what happens when we speak at 2.30? And she kind of did a little obfuscation here, you know. And some people say, I'll think about it now. See, I'm not going to give you references unless I get a commitment right now. It's actually using these stalls and objections to close people at that very moment. So, be good. so be, what would the amateurs say? Thank you very much. Give her a round, by the way. What would the amateur person do when they say, well, do you have references and things like that? What's the amateur do? Do they get defensive? And they're like, oh, why do you need references? I've been with Keller Williams and I'm a really nice person. I go to church every Sunday. And they get defensive, right? What happens to the prospect who asks that question? What do they think about that person now? Not trust Ooh. There, you know. So I do the opposite, and that's a call the guts move. Get, just using those stalls, those objections, to get a commitment up front, and that way you can find out whether or not you can do business. So that's a really strong, that's a really strong play, uh, role play there. Let's uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about some some sales myths here. Are we okay on time or I'm going way too long here? Are you guys okay? You want to stay up and do a stretch here or anything? Are we good? Yeah, we're fine. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Here's some sales myths. The customer is always right. Are they really? Yeah, I don't know. Oh man, they're so wrong sometimes. You need a script in sales. What did we learn about that? Do we use scripts or do we talk to people and ask questions with stroking and nurturing, okay? Real important. Do we ask for the order three to five times? No. No, no. Pretentious bonding, and, and at least they'll teach this in sales courses. Pretension bo pretentious bonding and rapport. Do you ever go to a salesperson that, or in some sales environment and they're a little too friendly right away? Hey, Doug, welcome to ABC Birmingham Ford, baby. Wow. <laughs> hey, that's 7600, that's a beauty, baby. You know, what, is they, what are they doing and you know what they're doing, right? It's pretentious. You've got to be a great thespian. I said that very carefully, thespian. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's nice. You know, I, I live in California. <laughs> uh, be subservient to the needs of the client. Did you ever just keep giving and giving and giving and then you didn't get the order? You didn't get the, we gotta stop being subservient. We have to be the authority. We have to be the leader in the sales, in sales. S sales tricks and gimmicks, okay? People are not dumb. Let's not treat them, well. let's not insult their intelligence by doing this little, well, if they fold their hands, I'm gonna fold my hands now. They, we know what they're doing. So let's stop with the little with the little games and things like that. Let's should we have all the answers? What do salespeople always want? Oh, I don't know, I'm not ready or anything. What we should have is all the questions. We should learn. If it's anything, 
I don't like scripts and all that stuff, but if it's anything you want to do, have the questions ready that you need to ask, the information that you want in the first couple of minutes so you can determine whether or not you have a deal or not. Always bring literature. Did you ever get a salesperson who brings in all this literature and stuff? I don't bring a thing. Maybe I'll have a contract in my car. That's about it. I think you're scared of when you do all that stuff. Everyone is a prospect. Is that true? I've given million dollar product presentations to people. I have bought them lattes. I have driven them in my car. And then they said, gee, Claude, you're wonderful. God bless you. If we have the money, we do the deal. <laughs> I'm the only one, right? When should we talk about money? In the beginning, the middle, or the end? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Pro Mr. and Mrs. Prospect. If I can have, if, have you set aside a budget? Have you discussed money? Have you gone to your mortgage lender? Do you have, do you have enough money to put down so I can put you into this house? And then they might change the subject and go to that, use that obfuscation and ask the tough questions up front. Um, anyone can become a salesperson. You know they don't train, they don't train, train uh, they don't uh, train people or teach sales in Harvard or any of the business schools. And to me, it's the million dollar skill. And it's hard work and you gotta learn a lot and do a lot of reading, but if you practice. Salesmen are born, no, salesmen are made. And finally, sales is a numbers game, just like selling cookies, isn't it? Whoops. My little girl. Southern California. We, we got him for $250, which proves you can rent on children also. <laughs> David, David grew up, he was a Boy Scout, he did the same thing his sister did, selling popcorn. And today he's 26 years old, he's the youngest manager in the, in the Safeway Albertsons Corporation. Sales, communication, it's all, it's even for our kids, it's good stuff. Let's talk about um, this is my new book that's coming out later this year, The Rules of the Guts uh, Sales Method. Let's get, finally, Claude, let's get to the Guts Sales Method. It's three simple steps. And once again, if you send that text, you'll get this all, you'll get this all sent to you for free. Three separate steps. Agenda, qualification, close. That's all you gotta remember. Then they break down into what we call little baby steps. The agenda. It's basically where, and where we, at some point we tell the prospect what's going to happen. We're going to say, hey, I'd like to ask you a few questions and it's okay to fire me. We have what is called an adult to adult conversation. Who wants to, who wants to, share, who wants to do an agenda with me? Oh, I have a good one here. We've got a sales book. Who wants to do that? Go ahead, stand up. Come on up here. Hi, Gary, I'm Claude, uh, Claude Diamond. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about your house? I'm very interested in doing a deal today. Is that all right with you, Gary? Yes. Uh, thank you, so he's nice. <laughs> uh, I always get, sometimes I don't get a nice person up here. I said, is it okay to ask you a few questions about your property? I'm looking to do a transaction today. Then you can ask me a few questions, and we can figure out if we can do business. 
And you know what, if, if this isn't right for you, could you do me a favor? You don't have to say you'll think about it or you'll go to your lovely spouse. Are you two together? Yes. Oh, give me that back, I'll give you a timer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and at the end of the conversation, you can say, Claude, we, we, uh, you can ask me some questions, we can move ahead. Or you say, Claude, it's over, you're fired, and, and that's okay too. Do you mind if I do that with you just for a moment? Thank you. He didn't do a good job. So. <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you. That's that's an agenda. Just sit up. Thank you. You can sit down there. <laughs> <worked long. laughs> but very simple step up front where you're, I think, has anyone here ever met a salesperson who said it's okay to fire me? Have you ever met this person? What do you think is going through the mind of the prospect when the salesman says, look, if we can do business great, if not, you know, we don't have to play any games, we can both be adults in the room, and you can just say, Claude, it's over, we're done, I'm not gonna do this. I'm giving him permission. It's like when you go to the dentist, you ever go and they put a little swab in and then they put out that four foot needle and they shove it into your mouth and everything. They tell you what's going to happen before it happens, right? It still hurts, but at least you know what's going on. That's drawing a roadmap up front. That's the agenda. The next step, and this, this is the most, I think the most important part of the gut sales method, is learning how to ask questions. But when we just ask questions, when someone does a police cross-examining or like in a courtroom or something, what's question? Questions are a little abrasive, aren't they? Just rapid fire questions. We have to ask questions that stroke or nurture. Somebody asked me a, somebody asked me a question. By the way, should we always answer a question with another question? Say yes. Yes. Who had a hand up around here? Somebody is up. There you go. There you go. How you doing? Tristan. Yeah. Tristan, um, uh, ask me a question, anything. How can I get $24,000 cash to start getting this real estate? How do I? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, now, Tristan, that's a really good question. You must have brought that up for a reason. Could you share that with me? Yes, sir, I actually brought up like for me in the market, I remodeled home for a living and all. I can get him with some health issues, turn on healing center. I can get him and make a million dollars for black people in the year to take care of my family and dogs for that. Did you see what he did? He just made us very emotional too at the same time. Ah. So I want to donate some money. <laughs> <laughs> So if I could help you, or someone in this audience could help you tonight, and say, I want to talk to you, Tristan. Um, is that what you're looking for to accomplish tonight? Um, and, if, and if we could do that, would you be willing to help somebody else in the audience yeah. also? I think maybe we can do business. Good man. Thank you. 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 What happens when we always say, we, do we think we need to know all the answers to all the questions, by the way? Sometimes the best words we can use are, I don't know. I don't know, that's a good question. You must have asked that for a reason. Is down payment a problem right now for you? Suppose we could finance it or something like that. That wouldn't make a difference, would it? These are the way you respond and keep the conversation going and glean information and get commitment. When we speak to people, we need to find out their motivation. Gee, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, why are you selling your home? You've been in it. Let somebody roll for it. You got a front of face. Stand up here. I got to do it for you. And your name? Aisha. 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 How, how long have you been in your home? Give me a number. Five years. Five years. Why are you selling your home, Aisha? What's that? Well, you've been there five years. It's a great neighborhood. Why not stay another five years? Oh, but schools aren't so bad where you are. You can take online courses. Then you can stay in your home. Online. You don't really want to move that bad, do you? Or really? Not right away. It's right now. Like right now? Right now. Oh my gosh. What, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am, I doing? What am I doing? Am I am I going is this is called a redirection. Okay, the traditional salesperson would say, oh yeah, let me help you, I'm a Keller Williams, I'm an investor, we can talk about this. What did I do to I, I, I should, excuse me. I said, why don't you stay in the home? What happens when I tell her to do the opposite of what she wants to do? What does she start doing? Something happened, thank you. Round of applause, my <laughs> Instead of telling her and doing a self-serving, 
during the presentation. I asked her questions. She started defending her decision. Was she giving me more information? What did she say why she wanted to move? Who was listening? That's the hardest thing for men to do. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay? Listen. She said, oh, so now we got information. Something magical happens when you go in the opposite redirection. It can be positive or negative, and you ask questions that way. The prospect starts becoming, this is important, the prospect starts becoming the sales. They do the work for you. You actually can have so much fun. And they'll tell you everything you want to know. She wants to move for a better school. So I should, back in the old days, if I could help you find a better home and help you sell your home in the next 30, 60, 90 days, you wouldn't want me to help you do something today on your home, right? What? Well, it's not that hard. We only make it hard. We've got to find out their needs, their greets, their problems. We need to do redirection, positive and negative. Passion, emotional behavior. People make immediate business decisions intellectually or from here. Has anyone ever made a bad decision emotionally? <laughs> Come on, you know who you are. You woke up the next morning and said, Why did I do that? <laughs> We've all done that. But people, and that's called the million dollar rule. It's the most important thing I teach. People make immediate business decisions emotionally. If you can, is, is real estate emotional? Yes. Say yes, please. Yes. yes. It's very emotional. It's about family, security, warmth, love, financial. If you can ask the right questions that bring up that EQ, you can go right up the yes ladder. Okay? You've got to find the emotional quotient. The EQ is more important than the IQ. We all go to people and give these intellectual presentations, and it's boring and it's redundant, and they've heard it 10 times before. But if we ask the questions that bring out the EQ, which I will demonstrate in a minute on one of my other slides, you will be in control of the process, and you will get a lot more yeses. We give them a score or a rating in the qualification step. I call it the Claude Barometer. One through ten. I want to see if I can get them up to an eight, nine, or ten. If they're a one, two, or three, where they say, I'm not real, I just want to see what the market is there, I'm really not interested in selling it or anything. They're a one, two, or three. How much time should we spend with them? Thank you. And if they say, well, and if you get something like I should have said just now, she wants to move, she wants to move quickly, she wants to go to a better school area. Aisha would be a seven, eight, or nine possible. You still have to qualify her for the biggie though. Money, when do we talk about money? One more time, please. In the beginning, just like the Bible, right? In the beginning, talk about the money. Most people will not talk about the money. So when you say, so I would go back to Aisha, and I'd say, Aisha, if I can help you get in a home in the next 30 days and get you out of your other home, you have a budget set aside so we can facilitate that purchase. She'll say, yes, can we did, can you give me some details? Have you been to a mortgage lender? Um, and did you open up your um, ch change bucket? I have a change bucket still. Okay, I remember the days when I was broke. I still had a change bucket on my desk. But you have to find out the money issues up front. Did they, are they pre-qualified? And don't just take a yes. Go into details. Because then they'll say later on, oh, I thought I was going to borrow my mom, mom, borrow the money from Uncle Harry, who I haven't talked, spoken to in 10 years. Character. Can you get a commitment from them? And can, can character does matter, and you need to get those affirmative commitments from them up front. Ask questions that are open and close, positive and negative. These are the things I do on my role plays with my students all the time. We role play all the time, every Monday in private calls, and we just practice, practice. We do live calls and everything. This is, you've got, got to find yourself an accountability buddy and practice asking questions of each other and see if you can qualify, get information, and get commitments. The last step is the close. This is finally where we have the information. This is where you give the, pre the presentation about how you can solve their problems, buying, selling, or investing. This is where you get a commitment up front. Aisha, if I can help you get into a home, and we can work it within your budget in the next 30, 60, 90 days, would we be able to move forward? Boom. Get a commitment up front. Then we satisfy. I know Aisha, I know a property and that's in the nice school district area where you could go to that and get your MBA or whatever you're looking for. 
is, is, that going to, is that going to help us move forward today? So ask the questions from, that you're using to qualify them, and then you put insert them into your presentation finally, because now it really matters. Now you have the bullets that go in the gut. You have to review all their needs, their greeds, fears, and joys multiple times. All the information they need gave you so you can keep it information, you can keep it emotional. You don't sell them, you make them want to buy. Because what happens a lot of times when we when we rush somebody, we intimidate them, what do they do the next morning? Did anyone here ever get their heart broken with that phone call? And they say, you know, come on, we were thinking about it, and we're gonna, you know, rip up the check. We are, we're gonna hold off a while. Tell me that's not the worst, right? Whose fault is that, by the way? The prospect or the salesperson? Salesperson. There are no bad prospects, only crummy salespeople. Ask the question, if we can satisfy your wants and needs, can we move and, and, and work within your budget and the time frame we want? Can we move forward? What would you like to do next? Don't love them and leave them. It's, it's the dangerous part. The million dollar rule is the most important thing. Everything is emotional in sales. Let's get out of the intellectual presentations and scripts. Prospects make immediate business decisions based on emotion. They only justify it later rationally. I'll tell you a little story here, then I'm gonna show you a little movie, and then you're gonna give me a robust round of applause and we'll do Q&A, okay? Say okay, please. Okay, thank you. My wife, Claudia, we're driving out of the Costco in San Diego. She's driving, she's a better driver than me. Um, there's a man there holding a sign like this one. It said, lost my job, my children are hungry. And behind him were four little kids. Now, I'm from New York City. I could trip over street people before I give them a dime, truth be told. Okay? I saw this. I said to Claudia, pull over. I reached in my pocket. I gave him all the, all the money I had. I said, feed these kids, because I don't like hungry kids in America. Who does, right? I, we're driving down the road, and was that an emotional or an intellectual decision? Emotional. <laughs> Very emotional. Did I make it instantly? Yes. People make immediate business decisions emotionally. I love this story because it demonstrated to me exactly this point. When we're talking to people in sales, in real estate, bring out the emotions about the love of the house, the security, the investment, or whatever it takes. Be creative in that. Here's a movie. This is the most popular movie in, on YouTube, I believe. It was made by a marketing firm in London. It, is, it demonstrates everything that I've spoken about tonight. Um, let's watch it. If I can get to You have to learn the psychology of why people lie, 
You have to be a good actor so they feel that you are sincere, that you are likable, that you are trustworthy. If you learn these skills and you practice the rule of five, you cannot help but to succeed in this wonderful business. Thank you so much. You're wonderful.
because that's the strongest tool they have. But the things that I, I shouldn't even be allowed to teach you some of these things here tonight because they, uh, there are people who have used these uh, means of psychological uh, uh, controlling people emotionally for evil also. We've heard of, anybody here of Jim Jones and people like that, okay? So people use these things. We can use it for good, we can help people. People don't know what good, hardworking people you are, how hard you work, you're not doing it for a Lamborghini in the garage, you're doing it to pay your bills and take care of your family. You deserve as much business as possible. These are the tools you need to get to your financial freedom. Drive safely. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. That was, I, I feel like that wasn't a good enough round of applause. Please thank Bob.